Coming up in this week's episode of the Theme Park News Show, I share my thoughts on the recently announced tallest, fastest and longest roller coaster in the world. Along with that, I talk about plans for a new ride coming to Chessington, take a look at a new experience opening at Efteling and much more. It's Friday the 6th of September 2019 and this is the Theme Park News Show. I'm Sean Sandbrook and welcome to the Theme Park News Show. Now you may have guessed already, no I'm not at the world of theme parks. In fact this week I'm over in Poland where I've just spent two days at Energylandia and I'm actually sitting right now at the Western Camp Resort uh, which is just down the road from Energylandia in a wooden chuck wagon. Uh, now this is a heavily themed Wild West Resort. I've actually filmed a separate vlog all on this uh, showing you guys round and a full room tour and uh, yeah you'll have to check that out. Uh, both that and the two vlogs from Energylandia Landia will be online here on Theme Park Worldwide early next week, uh, so stay tuned for those. Uh, we'll be having a great couple of days at the park, and this has been really nice accommodation here, actually. It's got like an outdoor cinema, hammocks just to relax in, open campfires, and of course, over in the park itself, I've got to experience Zardra, uh, that brand new RMC coaster that only opened a few weeks ago, and I tell you what, that thing is relentless. Uh, the speed on it is absolutely crazy. Uh, there'll be a full review, including on-ride POVs from all the different rides at Energylandia. Uh, like I said, just coming in them vlogs early next week here on the channel. Uh, so it's certainly very exciting. Uh, quite a bit of theme park news to talk about. Maybe not as much this week as there has been over previous weeks. Uh, but it's great to hear that we're getting some more announcements now, ready for things opening in 2020. And of course, here on Theme Park Worldwide, we'll be keeping you up to date on all the latest developments happening for next year. And uh, yeah, I always look forward to following what's happening in the industry and sharing it with you guys. Moving on then, it's time for news on the tracks. Now this was actually announced a couple of weeks ago, but many people want to know my thoughts on the new Six Flags Park that was announced for Saudi Arabia. Uh, now the first stage of this is set to open in 2023, uh, like the first phase of the development. And uh, yeah, we had a video released from them that showed a crazy roller coaster uh, that would be the tallest, fastest and longest roller coaster in the world. That is smashing three records, uh, but more about that in just a moment. The park itself, um, like I say phase one set to open in 2023 and more from that um, but yes when it opens there's set to be 12 record-breaking attractions um, so that's quite interesting to hear there's going to be 28 rides and attractions all mixed into six different themed lands uh, now this is actually going to be a very different style Six Flags Park Six Flags aren't really known for their heavy theming and with this park it's not actually owned by the Six Flags chain uh, it's actually owned by a separate company uh, and they're sort of like licensing in the Six Flags name and the brand, uh, but it's going to look completely different as you can see in some of this concept art. Um, but yeah, this investment group are going to be sort of uh, spending all the money on this park and putting it together uh, with just with that Six Flags name against it. And yeah, I must say, it looks absolutely insane. I mean, let's just hope that this actually gets built because it'll certainly be one to go out there and check out. Uh, but yeah, it'll also feature the world's tallest drop ride and they have stated that this will be the most unique Six Flags theme park ever built. And I, I like the words theme park because I would definitely class Six Flags parks that I've been to across America um, as amusement parks. So uh, yeah, looking at all this concept art, it is a theme park. Um, but there was something that was released that a lot of people have sort of looked at. Some people have thought, blimey, that's going to be amazing. Others have thought, don't be ridiculous, that's not going to get built. With me, of course, I've got to be impartial to these things, but I am going to share my thoughts on it. Um, I'm going to put some footage in now on the screen of this video that they have released officially of this record-breaking coaster called Falcon's Flight, um, which, if it does get built, will be the world's tallest, fastest, and longest roller coaster. And look at this video. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind with this is that it doesn't look that professional what you got to think here i mean this isn't going to open to 
at least 2023. Um, you know, it's a good nearly four years away. This must be a very, very early, not even a concept to what they want to build. This is someone sitting in an office thinking, right, okay, the bosses have said they want to build this massive record-breaking coaster. Let's put something together just to put out there for the press release. Um, people are saying, oh, you know, the layout, it wouldn't make it up there or the G-forces would be too high. Honestly, this is just a very, very early rendering of what they want. Um, if this thing does get built, then I don't think it's going to look anything like that in terms of the layout. Um, but they have stated, you know, it will feature those three things, you know, the tallest, fastest, longest, um, which would be absolutely insane. It really would. Um, but yeah, like looking at all these visuals and stuff, what you can see in the video and a bit of uh, footage of the coaster in action, um, you know, you can't sort of, you've got to take it with a bit of a pinch of salt that um, even if it does get built, it's going to look nothing like that at all. I wouldn't suspect that's, you know, the, the train design, the track design. Uh, because yeah the video is it's not very realistic at all is it you know it wouldn't make it around some of them elements and uh, the bottom of some of them drops would be ridiculously intense but you got to think you know they could do it and I think it'd be really interesting to sort of follow the development with this one um, but as always here on Theme Park Worldwide I like to cover these topics and let me know your thoughts on this down below in the video comments because it certainly does look very interesting um, but yeah is it going to happen is it not going to happen I'd love to know what you guys guys think about this one. Next up then we've got some news uh, that hopefully this is going to be happening because this is news for Chessington World of Adventures here in the UK. Um, now with this one, it, they've actually applied for planning permission just a few days ago to remove Ramesses Revenge, which is the park's Hus Top Spin. Uh, now bear in mind Chessington is owned by Merlin Entertainment, the same company um, that own Heidi Park over in Germany. They had a Hus Top Spin and it got removed. Alton Towers uh, here in the UK, the Hus Top Spin Ripsaw, that got removed. So seems like this has come to the end of its life, uh, which we knew was coming like with the other ones. Um, with this, I know some people have thought, oh, you know, maybe it's going to be getting relocated to Thorpe Park or Alton Towers. Um, I very highly doubt it. I'm 99.9% .9 sure this will just be getting scrapped, unfortunately, which does make me sad, but I think a lot of us knew this was coming, and I've mentioned it in vlogs, especially recently, uh, thinking, to be honest, you've got to make the most of this attraction whilst it's still standing. It's an old ride, and, you know, the park are really changing. Look at how much has changed at Chessington over the past sort of seven or eight years. Loads of new things have come in but mostly re-themes with this it's not a re-theme it's a brand new ride and uh, yeah they're looking at putting in a drop tower in its place so yeah I mean I'll put this on your screen now uh, this is taken from the actual planning document that they've submitted and uh, yeah, it seems like they want to put in this drop tower that I'm a bit concerned about the throughput with, uh, with the only being one of these. I mean, I'm not too sure how many seats there is on there. Looks like it might be similar, maybe. This is just me hazarding a guess. Uh, to Magma at Paltons Park, that sort of height as well, maybe a little bit taller, but you gotta think with Ramses Revenge, it is down in a dip, um, so they can sort of use that to its advantage. But the interesting thing with this application is the theming, because it looks like they're gonna be building this giant sort of alligator's mouth which is going to be open and there's going to be smoke, water, um, various other lighting effects and maybe more than that to create an overall experience that should be really good for Chessington. You've got to think they've put some great theming in there. I mean Tiger Rock looks brilliant uh, with all the tiger face and it dropping down underneath it um, and some of the other areas at Chessington they've, they've made some good improvements so I'm quite excited for this. You've got to bear in mind this is just the application going in. It doesn't mean it's going to be happening. I mean Chessington have had issues before with planning and stuff so um, you know let's just hope fingers crossed this will get passed I know a lot of people will be quite sad to lose Ramesses Revenge me personally like I say I am sad especially with all the water effects it looked great it was a very visually pleasing ride but something tells me with this one it'll also be very visually pleasing if you're gonna have that big alligator mouth and it dropping down into it um, and all the effects they, they sort of don't want to lose that because a lot of people get enjoyment standing off Ramesses Revenge and watching it that'll be the exact same with this ride and the fact they're keeping it uh, in the dip as well will really make it uh, but yeah you know it'll be interesting to see you've got to bear in mind Merlin don't really like putting in new flat rides 
and this is a new flat ride so um, you know could this be a sign could we be seeing a flat ride come to Walton Towers as part of next year's development in Cloud Cuckoo Land you know the, the possibilities are endless I think it's quite exciting to see that uh, Merlin Howell are buying this drop tower subject to planning permission and uh, putting in some heavy theme in it's also worth pointing out the Flying Jumbos ride which is just behind it they've applied for, for permission to move that to another location um, and also as well put in lots of new queue lines uh, and stuff for this new drop tower as well and all the associated landscaping work so uh, again here at Theme Park Worldwide we'll always keep you updated with all the latest news as always um, but yeah me personally quite excited for this one as much as it's a bit of a shame to be losing a classic these parts have got to move on and when something comes to the end of its life safety is paramount um, something brand new though now uh, as we move over to the Netherlands and Efteling um, because the Six Swans which is a new experience as part of the Fairytale Forest is going to be opening later this month and we're just going to talk a little bit about it uh, and I'll share some images on your screen for you uh, that Efteling have, re have released from this new experience so you're going to be able to take a boat trip in this new attraction as part of the Fairytale Forest which is the huge area at Efteling where the park all started really and uh, you know I love it round there as much as I do struggle to understand some parts um, you know I still like visiting it and seeing it all I filmed it in the various Efteling vlogs including our most recent from a couple of weeks ago so you'll have to check that out if you're unsure all about it and how it works um, but yeah at the moment there's no rides as part of that but they're building this short ride where you're going to be able to sit on a swan and head inside the fairy tale and then it'll bring you back out again. Uh, now if you don't want to queue up to go on the ride, you don't have to. Um, you know, you can just walk through this as well. There'll be a path through the, uh, the fairy tale. Um, but yeah, that's just how the area works. You know, there's lots of different rooms you can go in, lots of experiences. Uh, there's like a tree. You've got Stretchy Neck, as me and Charlotte call them in the vlog. You know, very iconic uh, for the park. You know, where he lifts his neck and he keeps stretching. Uh, but yeah, this will be a ride. It'll be an experience where you can go in and some scenery around and it'll tell you this story. I imagine it's only going to be quite short uh, but it looks beautiful doesn't it? I mean look at all these images um, it's a 15 metre tall castle what they've built and that's where the story will be told uh, and yeah this is actually going to be opening on the 28th of September 2019 uh, that's the Six Swans at Efteling so yeah, I think that's uh, you know exciting to see that they're doing it. We had a little look at the construction when we was there a few weeks back and yeah I can honestly say I think this will be a really nice addition to the fairy Hotel Forest. Uh, I love F telling and I look forward to seeing this at some point in the future. Just a small little update then now from Europa Park. Of course, there's lots going on there at the moment. They keep testing the water slides, ready for Rulantica that opens this November. Uh, but not forgetting that the mascot of Rulantica, Snorri, will be getting a new dark ride as part of the rebuilt Scandinavia themed area in the park itself. Uh, Snorri Touring will be a tracked dart ride. It's going to last about four and a half minutes, which is longer than I originally thought, actually. And it's going to be built in the basement underneath, uh, like the footpaths and the overall area. And yeah, you're going to sort of go down some steps, I imagine, and, and then you're going to go on this ride, uh, or maybe like an elevator or something. Uh, and yeah, like it's going to be a four and a half minute ish ride that's going to take you through the world of Snorri, uh, all based on that mascot for Rulantica, the new water park. Uh, so this would be really nice. And we've actually got an opening date for this new attraction lots of concept art and stuff's been released for it as well in recent weeks and uh, yeah we know that this attraction is going to be opening on November the 23rd 2019 uh, which will be the opening of the winter season at the park so that's nice for them because it means that there's a big draw to go out there for winter season to see a new ride and I'm sure a lot of people will I'm hoping to get out there for winter I mean that's not a promise I've got a lot of stuff I want to do um, you know not enough time that's the problem but um, you know this looks like it'll be a really nice addition that's Snorri Touring and that's confirmed to be opening on the 23rd of November uh, 2019. Finally then, just want to talk a little bit about two iconic attractions that have closed at two European theme parks this week on the 1st of September. Uh, the first of those being Bob, uh, that Intamin Swiss Bob at Efteling. And oh, what a ride. It opened back in 1985. So it was an old ride. Uh, but it's a shame that we've lost it. Uh, but already they're not messing about. I've seen images earlier today, just a few hours ago, of the ride being torn down already. Uh, but yeah, it closed early in this week. It's going to be replaced by a new ride, uh, two Two powered roller coasters from Mac Rides called Max and Moritz, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. 
Of course, I don't think it's going to be uh, Bob, you know, in terms of uh, the nostalgia that ride had, but I think it'll be a nice modern family experience. Hope there's a better theme in more around it as well. We know they're using the existing station building and extending it, uh, but it looks like it just goes through the trees, but I'm hoping for a lot of little bits of theming and stuff to look at, maybe some audio out in the trees and the forest. Uh, I say the forest, they've actually took down a lot of the trees uh, to demolish Bob's circuit, but they're going to be planting loads more trees as well to make up for that, which is good and also great for the environment, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that's closed at Efteling, along with that rock and roller coaster closing on the same day um, at Walt Disney Studios at Disneyland Paris. Uh, the vlogs for day one and day two have gone online over the past two days on the channel, so make sure you check them out. And I also have my last ride on rock and roller coaster. Um, you know, it was quite sad thinking, oh, you know, it's all done with, but it was a great ride. All the lighting packages made it the onboard audio um, but you know I think it's going to be interesting to see what this new Iron Man coaster is like there's still not that much information about it at the moment uh, so I'm hoping we see more soon there's a few visuals and stuff for how it's going to look but we don't really know what the actual coaster side to it's going to look like we've seen the exterior and a bit of the queue line but we don't know much more but there we go share your best memories from Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith and also Bob uh, down below in the video comments I always read through and reply to your comments or give them my heart and uh, you know it's always nice to see and hear your thoughts from the various different rides uh, but there we go that is all for the news this week it's now time for where am i where am i so as mentioned in last week's video, I wanted to give you guys another week to try and guess this one. There was a couple of people that got it right, uh, but I thought, now I'm going to keep you guys going and see who uh, manages to work this one out. And a few more people did. I was actually sitting on the flying machines at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, so well done to anyone who got that one right. Uh, anyway, let's have another new photo for you to try and guess exactly where I am. Here it is on your screen now. And remember, this segment is just for fun. There's no prizes or anything like that. Um, but of course, down below in the comments, I'm always dropping a few hints and tips if I think you are struggling. Um, I did on the last one as well. Um, so yes, make sure you comment down below and try and guess exactly where I am. And I'll reveal it in next Friday's episode. just before we move forward with the final segment of this week's episode, which as always is your theme park moments, I uh, just wanted to say that I hope that everybody out there in Florida, including friends of theme park worldwide and of course fans of the channel, uh, you all stayed safe out there during Storm Dorian this week. There has been a huge hurricane uh, that has ripped through parts of Florida and uh, yeah, I just want to say that I hope you've all stayed safe out there, indoors um, you know, and protected from it. Uh, it does seem like it's coming to an end now uh, which is always good news. And uh, yeah, I just hope that you've all stayed safe. Along with that as well, I just wanted to share a bit of an update for you. Uh, you know, because me and Charlotte are heading out to Florida uh, in a few weeks' time. So not long to go, actually, until we visit. Uh, I know some people have commented this week saying, you know, do we fly out this week? Uh, you know, are we going anytime soon? There is still about two and a half weeks until me and Charlotte's trip. Um, but I just want to say thank you to everyone that's been concerned and has commented on the videos or spoke to us on social media. Uh, but yeah, we're not out there at the moment, as you can see. I mean, in a, uh, you know, in a truck wagon in Poland. Uh, but yeah, we are going to be heading out there soon. And uh, yeah, hopefully the hurricane will have fully passed by then. Um, but yes, if you have been out there uh, over the past week, hope you've stayed safe. Uh, anyway, let's move on then um, to the final segment. Of course, your theme park moments. Quite a lot of photos to go through this week. Uh, so let's get started. Firstly, then we've got Ethan, who's got this photo at Port Ventura. Moving on, we've got Jack outside Taran just there. Moving on then, we've got Grady and his mum outside Millennium. I've just noticed, anyone who sent one in, you're having your picture displayed in front of a wardrobe this week. There we are, something to remember. <laughs> Moving on then, uh, we've got Bryony, who had a photo with me just there. Uh, up next then, we've got Oliver, who had a picture at Thorpe Park. Moving on then, we've got Amy, who had a picture with me and Charlotte. And then we've got Nathan with a Wicker Man on-ride photo. Moving on then, um, we've got Nathan with a Megaphobia on-ride photo. One Nathan at Wickham and another Nathan at another wooden coaster. Megaphobia. Love it. Uh, we've then got Gary and the family at Paulton's Park. Hope you had a great time. And of course, check out our latest construction update from Tornado Springs that's now online. That new area opening in 2020. Moving on then, we've got Jeff, Gene and Larry outside Steel Vengeance. 
great friends of ours. We actually met up with them during our America trip. Uh, I first met them actually um, here in the UK. Well, I say here in the UK, not here in Poland, um, at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, you know, so it was great to bump into them, of course, over in America as well. Uh, moving on then, we've got Ruby and the family uh, on Apocalypse just there. And then we've got William with a Millennium Force on Ride Photo. Up next then, we've got Simon and Ethan on Wicker Man at Alton Towers. And then we've got Rob, Alfie and Casey at Gulliver's World. Up next then, we've got Callum with a Nemesis on Ride Photo. And then we've got George at Legoland just there. Moving on, we've got the Holbers family at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Hope you had an awesome day. And then got Helen and Christine on the roller coaster just there. So thank you very much for sending in that one. Next up then we've got Luke, Chris and George at Europa Park in Germany. And then we've got the Christ family um, just here with a runaway mine train on Ride Photo. Up next then we've got Dylan uh, with a Kukulin on Ride Photo from Tato Park. Probably didn't say it right, my pronunciation's awful, uh, but there we go. The big wooden coaster out in Ireland. <laughs> Moving on we've got Jack at the London Dungeon just there. Up next then, uh, we've got Ola uh, at Flamingo Land just there. Again, I'm not too sure if I pronounce your name right. Uh, we've then got Jess who had a picture at Cedar Point. And moving on, we've got Freddie and also Frankie on the Gruffalo just there. So thank you for sending that one in. We've well, then got Guy and Kane at Chessington just there. And moving on from that, we've got Anya and Grace with a photo from the Smiler. Moving on, we've got Shannon and Rob on Infusion at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Hope your ears are all right after that one. And then we've got Tommy at Cedar Point just there as well. Then we've got Amy with a Megaphobia on ride photo. And then we've got Josh at Chessington there as well. Moving on, we've got Lisa who had a picture at Alton Towers. And then we've got William at Thorpe Park just there. Moving on, we've got Geordie at Europa Park. And then we've got Beth and Kane with an Oblivion on ride photo. Keep moving on then, we've got Simon, Gracie and Dylan with me and Charlotte. It was great to see you and I'll say it as always, if you run into us anywhere at the parks, of course come over and say hello. We've then got Mark with a Red Force on ride photo. And then we've got William who had a photo with the legend that is John Wardley. We've then got Jeanette and Les at Pleasure Beach just there. And then we've got Lone who had a photo with me. Uh, up next then we've got Gavin who also had a photo with me there as well. And then Leo at Disneyland Paris. Of course, check out the two new vlogs that have gone online the past two days from DLP here on the channel. Moving on then, we've got a bell outside Bob. Oh, rest in peace, Bob. And then we've got Nathan with a Bob on ride photo. So thanks for sending that one in. Then we've got Ed at Toverland just there. And then we've got Carly with a photo from the Ultimates. Moving on then, we've got Marianne at Adventure Island. And then moving on from that, we've got Ray and Zach with a photo from the Smiler. Up next then we've got Jenny at Thorpe Park. And then we've got Callum with a big one on Ride Photo. Up next then we've got Emily with a rock and roller coaster on Ride Photo. Last few to go now, we've got James with a Galactica on Ride Photo there. And then up next we've got Sib and also Hanny with a Walking Dead on Ride Photo. Then we've got James, Emma and Izzy outside 13. And then we've got Arlo and Phoenix with a Nemesis on Ride Photo. They got John who had a picture there at Pleasure Beach and the final photo is from Alfie uh, who had a picture at Alton Towers. Uh, happy birthdays this week then from me Charlotte and everyone at Theme Park Worldwide. A very big happy birthday to Becca, George, uh, Lone, to Lula. A uh, happy 18th birthday to Casey, 18th birthday to Dylan, uh, also to John, uh, Colette and Amy as well. So happy birthday to all of you from all of us. Uh, also some special mentions, a happy 5th wedding anniversary to Sarah and Lucy. Along with that as well a happy 5th wedding anniversary to Claire and Christopher. And then we've got congratulations to Scott and Jessica on their seventh anniversary. Congratulations to all three of you. I also want to say a big get well soon to Ryan, who's in hospital at the moment. Get well soon, Ryan. Hope you're watching the videos here on the channel and it's keeping you entertained whilst you're in hospital. Uh, but most importantly, get better soon. Uh, but there we go. It's come to the end of this week's episode here from my chuck wagon in Poland. Crazy, isn't it? Uh, but like I say, the vlogs from Energylandia will be coming online early next week. So stay tuned for those. If you want to see more of my accommodation, that'll also be coming uh, here on the channel as well. So 
make sure you stay tuned for that in a video next week. Just want to keep you guys in the loop with what's happening. There's two more episodes to go before we're going to be taking a little break whilst me and Charlotte go over to Orlando, Florida, film loads of new vlogs for you guys because of all the long park days, uh, Charlotte's first time, and uh, yeah, just generally enjoying ourselves. There's going to be two weeks where there's going to be no episode, uh, but we are going to be back uh, on the 11th of October. Um, so yeah, the episodes will end on the 20th of September. Uh, that'll be the last one. Uh, and then it'll be back from the 11th of October. So we missed a couple of episodes there, uh, but then we'll be back um, with straight into Halloween stuff, which is certainly very exciting. Uh, but there we go. Thank you very much for watching Theme Park Worldwide. Uh, I'm going to go outside now and relax in a hammock, I think. Uh, but there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Sean Sandbrook, and that means it's time to cue those credits. See you in the next video.